So integration by algebraic substitution we're going to look at now. There is actually also trigonometric substitution. So there's, we're looking at substitution methods. And these methods are used to try and make the integral look like one of the integrals on your standard integrals page. So you can then do it. It's all about that. And as we're going through it, we'll be talking about when it can be used and when it can't be used. So that's usually the... the sticking point in a way you've got an integral to do well which method do I use to use to do it because we're going to look at about three or four different ways we've looked at one using the power series we're going to look at a few more now and here's an example of one we've got to integrate that 2x minus 5 to the power of 7 I could expand it out 2x minus 5 brackets times 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5 7 lots of those expand out all those brackets and then I have a whole series of terms a bit like a power series I could integrate each one in turn I could do it that way and if I had something like integrate 2x minus 5 squared I might be tempted to do that because I could easily multiply out those brackets but if I've got something like this then I think about an, uh, an algebraic substitution way and what I do is this. I let part of the integral be u. And you might think about this as being a similar idea as the differentiation where we let part of it be u. And it is a similar sort of idea. We let u equal part of the integral 2x minus 5. So the integral now looks like this. u to the 7 because I've let u equal 2x minus 5 and that's one of the standard integrals if I integrate u to the 7 I get add 1 to the power divided by the new power u to the 8 over 8 the only trouble is I'm still integrating with respect to x so integral 2x minus 5 to the power 7 dx this top integral here means I'm integrating it with respect to x. I've changed it to u, so I've got to change this to with respect to u. And that's where this comes in, that's where this comes in. So what I do with u is, um, 2x minus 5 as I've written, and I differentiate it to u by dx. Make sure your u's look like u's and not y's. Not let's come across this problem before. Okay. And if I differentiate that, what do I get? Differentiate 2x minus 5. <coughs> 2. The u by the x equals 2. We're differentiating u. <laughs> why? Good question. I'm going to show you why now. Okay, if I differentiate it, now what I do is I rearrange this for dx. So if I multiply both sides by dx, I'd get du equals 2 dx. And if I divide both sides by 2, I get dx equals du over 2. So I treat it like a little algebraic expression. I differentiate it to get du by dx equals 2. And then I rearrange for dx. Because what I want to do now is to put this value for dx in here and replace dx by that. So I replace, by, replace dx by that. And I've now got this. So therefore the integral becomes the integral becomes integral of u to the 7 times du over 2. So let's just recap that because this is basically how this always works. I look at my integral. Here it is. And I think to myself, let's make a substitution. Let's let u equal this. 
Why does that help? Because then this becomes just a standard integral. The only problem is this has now got to become du. So what I do to get my du is I take whatever I've called u and I differentiate it and then rearrange and so that I get dx equals something du over 2 and then I can replace dx with du over 2. So now I can do the integral. And it's, that's the idea. So just to complete it now, add 1 to the power. Well, remember we talked about uh, before about this divide by 2 and this is an important thing just to look at just to make sure you don't trip on this. Divide by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half, isn't it? So I can bring that half outside the integral, and that's common. Whatever constant is inside, I can bring it out and put it outside. Dividing is exactly by 2 is the same as a half. So I can call this a half of the integral of u to the 7 du. That's the, probably the first thing I'd do. And then I'd use my table of standard integrals and that tells you to add one to the power and divide by the new power and then add C and then I just consolidate my numbers into one big number so 2 and 8 underneath becomes 16 so I can call that u to the 8 over 16 plus C done Yep. So the final step is to replace u with what it was, 2x minus 5. So the integral becomes 2x minus 5 to the power 8 plus c over 16. And then the, now if that had been a definite integral, this wasn't a definite integral, I could have then put my limits in and worked out what it was. No. Okay, yeah.